Chapter Eighteen of Part One of the Lives of the Three Mrs. Judsons by Arabella M. Wilson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Influence of these disasters on the missionary enterprise. Testimonials to Mrs. Judson's heroic conduct. Letter from Mr. Judson. His acceptance of the post of interpreter to Crawford's embassy. Mrs. Judson's residence at Amherst. Her illness and death. Death of her infant. Mrs. Judson concludes her long melancholy but most interesting letter to her brother as follows. A review of our trip to and adventures in Ava suggests the inquiry, why were we permitted to go? What good has been effected? Why did I not listen to the advice of my friends in Bengal and remain till the war was concluded? But all that we can say is, it is not in man that walketh to direct his steps, so far as my going round to rangoon at the time i did was instrumental in bringing those heavy afflictions upon us i can only state that if i ever acted from a sense of duty in my life it was at that time for my conscience would not allow me any peace when i thought of sending for your brother to calcutta in prospect of the approaching war our society at home have lost no property on account of our difficulties but two years of precious time have been lost to the mission unless some future advantage may be gained in consequence of the severe discipline to which we ourselves have been subject we are sometimes induced to think that the lesson we have found so very hard to learn will have a beneficial effect through our lives and that the mission may in the end be advanced rather than retarded in reference to this timid and hesitating hope of some benefit which might possibly accrue to the cause of missions from her terrible experience the remarks of dr doyling in a recent work are so appropriate that we will introduce them here previous to the commencement of these sufferings though a few american baptists were partially awaked to the salvation of the heathen yet the contributions for the mission were meagre and the interest it had excited was comparatively small something of a thrilling exciting character was needed to arouse the churches from their indifferent and lethargy something that should touch their hearts by showing them somewhat of the nature and extent of the sacrifices made by those devoted missionaries whom they were called upon to sustain by their benefactions and their prayers such a stimulus was afforded when after two years of painful suspense during which it was not known whether the missionaries were dead or alive the touching recital of their unparalleled sufferings for christ and of their wonderful deliverance at length burst like an electric shock among the american churches and that shock has not yet spent its force as we have recently seen in the effect produced by the simple silent presence in the assemblies of saints of the venerated man of god who can say with an apostle i bear in my body the scars of the lord jesus that worn veteran had but to arise in christian assembly and a thrill of sympathy was sent through the audience and thousands upon thousands of dollars were pledged on the spot to that cause which his silent presence so powerfully advocated another consequence of the war was to secure british toleration and protection to a large territory hitherto almost inaccessible to the missionaries of this we shall speak more fully hereafter mrs judson proceeds we should have no hesitation about remaining at ava if no part of the burman empire had been ceded to the british but as it was we felt that it would be unnecessary exposure besides the missionary field being more limited in consequence of intoleration we now consider our future missionary prospects as bright indeed and our only anxiety is to be once more in that situation 
when our time will be exclusively devoted to the instruction of the heathen this letter dreadful as the scenes herein described gives you but a faint idea of the awful reality the anguish and agony of mind resulting from a thousand little circumstances impossible to delineate on paper can be known by those only who have been in similar situations pray for us my dear brother and sister that these heavy afflictions may not be in vain but may be blessed to our spiritual good and the advancement of christ's church among the heathen the following is extracted from a tribute to mrs judson which appeared in a calcutta paper after the war it was written by a fellow prisoner of mr j mrs judson was the author of those eloquent and forcible appeals to the government which prepared them by degrees for submission to terms of peace never expected by any who knew the haughtiness and inflexible pride of the burman court and while on the subject the overflowings of grateful feelings on behalf of myself and fellow prisoners compel me to add a tribute of public thanks to that amiable and humane female who though living at a distance of two miles from our prison without any means of conveyance and very feeble in health forgot her own comfort and infirmity and almost every day visited us sought out and administered to our wants and contributed in every way to alleviate our misery when we were all left by the government destitute of food she with unweary perseverance by some means or other obtained for us a constant supply when the unfeeling avarice of our keepers confined us inside or made our feet fast in the stocks she like a ministering angel never ceased her applications to the government until she was authorized to communicate to us the grateful news of our enlargement or of a respite from our galling oppressions besides all this it was unquestionably owing in a chief degree to that repeated eloquence and forcible appeals of mrs judson that the untutored burman was finally made willing to secure the welfare of his country by a sincere peace well may professor gamo write of her history was not recorded poetry itself has seldom portrayed a more affecting exhibition of christian fortitude of female heroism and of all the noble and generous qualities which constitute the dignity and glory of a woman in the midst of sickness and danger and every calamity which can crush the human heart she presented a character equal to the sternest trial and an address and a fertility of resource which gave her an ascendancy over the minds of her most cruel enemies and alone saved the missionaries and their fellow captives from the terrible doom which constantly awaited them we will conclude this account of the terrible two years by an extract from a letter of mr judson dated rangoon march twenty fifth eighteen twenty six through the kind interposition of our heavenly father we have been preserved in the most imminent danger from the hand of the executioner and in repeated instances of most alarming illness during my protracted imprisonment of one year and seven months nine months and three pairs of fetters two months and five six months in one and two months in a prison at large the disciples and inquirers have been dispersed in all directions several are dead mong shaba has been in the mission house through the whole and mong ing with mrs judson at ava i long for the time when we shall enjoy once more the stated worship and ordinances of the lord's house one result of the burman war was the acquisition by the british of several provinces previously under the government of the king of burma thus a safe asylum was provided for the missionaries and for the christian natives where they might worship god in peace under the shelter of the english government one of these provinces was fixed upon the seat of the mission and the new town of amherst 
was to be the residence of the missionaries native christian families began to assemble there and mrs judson made vigorous preparations to open a school mr crawford of the british embassy after long solicitation succeeded in persuading mr judson that by accompanying him in the capacity of interpreter to the court of ava he might secure to the mission certain advantages he had long had greatly at heart and he reluctantly consented to go leaving mrs judson and her infant daughter in the house of the civil superintendent at amherst he proceeded to the burman capital the journey was every way unfortunate attended with long delays and in its result as far as mr judson was concerned quite unsuccessful but it was chiefly disastrous because it detained him from the sick and dying bed of that devoted wife to whom he was bound by every tie that attached human hearts to each other and compelled her to end her troubled pilgrimage alone that god who moves in a mysterious way had ordered it that she who had lived through appalling dangers and threatening deaths until her mission of love toward those she had cherished so fondly was accomplished was now that her child seemed nearly ended and the hopes of her heart seemingly in a train of accomplishment suddenly called from the scene of her labors to that of her exceeding great reward it was as if the noble ship after encountering storms and tempests after being often nearly wrecked and often saved almost by miracle should we already import and in sight of anxious spectators suddenly sink for ever in a letter to the corresponding secretary dated ava december seventh eighteen twenty six mr judson writes the news of the death of my dearly beloved wife has not only thrown a gloom over my future prospects but has forever embittered the recollection of this present journey in consequence of which i have been absent from her dying bread and prevented from affording the spiritual comfort which her lonely circumstances peculiarly required and of contributing to avert the fatal catastrophe which has deprived me of one of the first of women and best of wives i commend myself and motherless child to your sympathy and prayers from a letter that mr judson to mrs hasseltine we learn that when he parted from his wife she was in good health and comfortably situated with happy prospects of a new field of missionary labor and the expectation of seeing her husband again in three or four months at farthest his last letter from her was dated the fourteenth of september she says i have this day moved into the new house and for the first time since we were broke up at ava feel myself at home the house is large and convenient and if you were here i should feel quite happy poor little maria is still feeble when i ask her where papa is she always starts up and points towards the sea the servants have behaved very well and i have no trouble about anything except you and maria pray take care of yourself may god preserve and bless you and restore you again to your new and old home is the prayer of your affectionate anne another letter from a friend confirmed that the statement with regard to his wife's health though it spoke unfavorably of that of the child but continues mr judson my next communication was a letter with a black seal handed me by a person saying he was sorry to inform me of the death of the child i know not whether this was a mistake on his part or kindly intended to prepare my mind for the real intelligence i went to my room and opened the letter with a feeling of gratitude and joy that at any rate the mother was spared it began thus 
my dear sir to one who has suffered so much and with such exemplary fortitude there needs but little preface to tell a tale of distress it were cruel indeed to torture you with doubt and suspense to sum up the unhappy tidings in a few words mrs judson is no more at intervals continues mr judson i got through the dreadful letter and proceeded to give you the substance as indelibly engraven on my heart after adding that her disease was a violent fever which baffled the skill of the physicians and after eighteen days carried her to the grave he continues you perceive i have no account whatever of the state of her mind in the view of death and eternity or of her wishes concerning her darling babe whom she loved most intensely i will not trouble you my dear mother with the account of my own private feelings the bitter heart-rending anguish which for some days would not admit of mitigation and the comfort which the gospel subsequently afforded the gospel of jesus christ which brings life and immortality to light after his return to amherst mr judson writes amid the desolation that death has made i take up my pen to address once more the mother of my beloved anne i am sitting in the house she built in the room where she breathed her last and at a window from which i see the tree that stands at the head of her grave mr and mrs wade are living in the house having arrived here a month after anne's death and mrs w has taken charge of my poor motherless maria when i arrived mr wade met me at the landing place and as i passed on to the house one and another of the native christians came out and when they saw me they began to weep at length we reached the house and i almost expected to see my love come out to meet me as usual but no i saw in the arms of mrs wade a poor puny child who could not recognize her father and from whose infant mind had long been erased all recollection of the mother who loved her so much she turned away from me in alarm and i obliged to seek comfort elsewhere found my way to the grave but who ever obtained comfort there thence i went to the house in which i left her and looked at the spot where we last knelt in prayer and where we exchanged the parting kiss it seems that her head was much affected and she said but little she sometimes complained thus the teacher is long in coming and the missionaries are long in coming i must die alone and leave my little one but as it is the will of god i acquiesce in his will i am not afraid of death but i am afraid i shall not be able to bear these pains tell the teacher that the disease was most violent and that i could not write tell him all i suffered and died tell him all you see when she could not notice anything else she would still call the child to her and charge the nurse to be kind to it and indulge it in everything till its father should return the last day or two she lay almost senseless and motionless on the side her head reclining on her arm her eyes closed at eight in the evening with one exclamation of distress in the burman language she ceased to breathe from the physician who attended her he afterwards learned that the fatal termination of her disease was chiefly owing to the weakness of her constitution occasioned by severe privations and long protracted sufferings at which she endured at ava and oh adds her husband with what meekness patience magnanimity and christian fortitude she bore those sufferings and can i wish that they had been less can i sacrilegiously wish to rob her crown of a single gem much she saw and suffered of the evils of this world 
and eminently she was qualified to relish and enjoy the pure and holy rest into which she has entered true she has been taken away from a spear in which she was singularly qualified by her natural disposition her winning manners her devoted zeal and her perfect acquaintance with the language to be extensively serviceable to the cause of christ true she had been torn from her husband's bleeding heart and from her darling babe but infinite wisdom and love have presided as ever in the most afflicting dispensation faith decides that all is right to show that mrs judson was already appreciated as she deserved by the european society in amherst we will subjoin part of a letter from captain f of that place to a friend in rangoon i shall not attempt to give you an account of the gloom which the death of this amiable woman has thrown over our little society you who were so well acquainted with her we feel her loss more deeply but we had just known her long enough to value her acquaintance as a blessing in this remote corner i dread the effect it will have on poor judson i am sure you will take every care that this mournful intelligence may be open to him as carefully as possible in the calcutta review of eighteen forty eight we find this noble tribute to her memory of mrs judson little is known in the noisy world few comparatively are acquainted with her name few with her actions but if any woman since the first arrival of the white strangers on the shores of india has on the great theatre of war stretching between the mouth and the earwaddy of the borders of the hindu kush rightly earned for herself the title of a heroine mrs judson has by her doings and sufferings fairly earned the distinction a distinction be it said which her true woman's nature would have been very little appreciated still it is right that she should be honored by the world her sufferings were far more endurable her heroism far more noble than that which in more recent times have been so much pitied and so much applauded that she was a simple missionary's wife an american by birth and she told her tale with an artless modesty writing only what it became her to write treating only of matters that became a woman her captivity if so it can be called was voluntarily endured she of her own free will shared the sufferings of her husband taking to herself no credit for anything she did putting her trust in god and praying to him to strengthen her human weakness she was spared to breathe once again the free air of liberty but her troubles had done the work of death on her delicate frame and she was soon translated to heaven she was a real heroine the annals of the east present us with no parallel on the twenty sixth of april mr judson writes my sweet little maria lies by the side of her fond mother her complaint proved incurable the work of death went forward and after the usual process excruciating to a parent's feelings she ceased to breathe on the twenty fourth at three o'clock p m aged two years and three months we then closed her faded eyes and bound up her discolored lips and folded her little hands the exact pattern of her mother's on her cold breast the next morning we made her last bed under the hope tree hopia in the small enclosure which surrounds her mother's lonely grave many months later he wrote you ask many questions about her sufferings in ava but how can i answer them now there would be some pleasure in reviewing those scenes if she were alive but i cannot the only reflection that assuages the anguish of retrospection is that she now rests far away 
where no spotted face executioner can fill her heart with terror where no unfeeling magistrate can extort the scanty pittance which she had preserved through every risk to sustain her fettered husband and famishing babe no more exposed to lie on a bed of anguish stung with the uncertainty what would become of her poor husband and child when she was gone no she has her little ones around her i trust and has taught them to praise the source whence their deliverance flowed her little son his soul enlarged to angel size was perhaps first to meet her at heaven's portals and welcome his mother to his own abode and her daughter followed her in six short months and when we all meet in heaven when we all have arrived and when we find all safe forever safe and our saviour ever safe and glorious and in him all his beloved oh shall we not be happy and ever praise him who has endured the cross to wear and confer such a crown end of chapter eighteen end of part one